Welcome to Inside Your County Government. I'm your host and community engagement coordinator, Doria Fleischer. We're back today with another Let's Get Fiscal episode with Jake Dyer, our Chief of Budget. Jake, thanks for being here again today. Oh, thanks for having me. So we've been kind of all over the place talking about budget stuff in the last episode and, and what is the budget and how do we get there and what does it mean? Can you help us talk about the um, general fund and the capital improvement program today? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Okay. So last time we talked about the enterprise fund, which is one component of our budget. Correct. Can we start with capital improvement program? Yeah. So th awesome. Um, the capital improvement program is a little different than the enterprise funds because it's really not paying for day-to-day -day operating costs. It's really paying for capital costs. And a lot of those capital costs occur over multiple years. Uh, so sometimes like a school, let's think about a school, a school doesn't get built up in one year. There's a very long drawn out process to get that school built. It starts with its funding being secured, then you're starting to plan for it, starting to design for it, then you're constructing it, and then you're ultimately filling it up so you can have the school. So the, the process does take several years. So when we, and it's just kind of the same way with the CIP process. We start planning for projects and we work with project managers. And then once the funding is there for them to begin the project, then they start working towards it to get that project complete. So uh, I'm going to stop you for yeah. just a sec, Jake, because I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. The example you just gave, which is a great one, right. building a school that takes time. Mm -hmm. Can you tie us back real quick? Because I feel like we're going to get this question from, from people. Sure. But wait a minute, we're not the school system. Yeah. So that's a, gr that's a great question. So for all projects related, that it's part that it's funded by county government, it flows through this capital improvement program. So there's there's a schools component, which is really our, our largest capital component of our CIP program, but it also includes projects that are, it's being built for the by the College of Southern Maryland and for just Charles County campuses only. Like as we know, the College of Southern Maryland actually has a campus in Prince Frederick, a campus in Leonardtown. Those capital costs are not part of this program. Mm -hmm. It's the La Plata campus and the Hughesville regional campus. But there's also uh, transportation that's really uh, concerning like the road overlay program that's really putting new asphalt or repairing roads to keep the life longer, but also is road expansion and as well as parks. So there's any type of new park that's coming into the county, that's a county park that would flow through the capital improvement program. And then last is general government. And that kind of encompasses quite a few things, one of them being building infrastructure, so like new buildings, but it also includes land preservation mm. that we flow through the capital improvement program. So when we talk about capital improvement, it is the projects in Charles County, even if they're not just run by Charles County government, Correct. the projects in Charles County that take a lot of money, Yes. A lot of time and probably last a fair amount of time also. Yes, a lot of time to get started and then a lot of time to, to utilize. Is that an accurate statement? Yes. Okay, brilliant. Sorry, I cut you off before. Uh, no, so you're fine. Tell us more. Okay, how does the how does capital improvement program fit into the Charles County budget? So how does it fit in? It ultimately, uh, when we do this program, a lot of this program is being leveraged by bonds. So bonds is kind of like getting a mortgage to pay. For, like when you go buy a house, you don't sit down and write a check to pay for the house. You get a bank to finance the house and you pay that bank back on a monthly basis on your on a mortgage payment. It's very, we, we do have a similar process here in Charles County, but ours is called bonds. So we get, a lot of our revenue stream is covered by bonds and then we pay it back over a, uh, sometimes 10 year period, 15 year period, 20 year period, 30 year. We do different uh, terms based on how um, the life of th that actual building or asset. Because you wouldn't want to be paying for the paying the asset back after the asset is no longer in use. Right. Correct. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we use bonds to do that, but we also have state revenue sources. So for the school projects that I mentioned, that's new school, mm -hmm. there's actually uh, a large component that the state provides money to support that school. Uh, so that we get a lot of state funds through that, for that project, but we also get uh, occasionally federal funding to support some, sm some, uh, some projects, as well as we get, sometimes we use lo different type of local f sources. One Bonds is the most, but we could also use what we call PAYGO funding. PAYGO funding is essentially of using cash to pay for a project. Mm, so okay. if you have money saved up in your savings account, you're saving up a lot to re finally replace that HVAC system in your house, and you take the money out of your savings account and you pay for it, as opposed to going to the bank and asking the bank to pay, to finance, you know, a loan to pay for your new HVAC. If you HVAC. don't need the finance, yeah. you don't necessarily use it. And Correct. that's what your team sits and looks at, is yes. we've got a project that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. How are we going to pay for this project? Correct. Okay. Uh, but the largest component of determines 
if the bonds can pay for it is we have a debt policy limit that goes to the county commissioners, they say, and they say that only 8% of our revenues can be dedicated to dedicate to bonds. Okay. So we have to do a model to make sure our debt payment for all these projects will not exceed 8%. Because if it goes over 8%, then then we would be over leveraging our revenues to so to for expenses. So that means if we ever got to the 8% or over the 8%, that means that's less money that can go to the school system out of the general fund or the sheriff's office or county department. So we try and stay within our 8% limit every sense. year. So we're just, so we can stay within and pay our bills uh, as we're say we will. And and similar to your model of when you talked about household and mortgage, you don't want to spend so much on your mortgage that if something happened, you wouldn't be able to pay your electric bill that month. Correct. So it's a constant balance. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. Okay, so we've talked about kind of how it fits into the budget. What would you want residents to know? I mean, this is kind of the, the big stuff, right? Yes. What do you want residents to know about the capital improvement program and, and so, what it means, how they can know more about it? Yeah, so uh, on our website, uh, we do have a series of documents that can show the, the, the public what is capital projects. So right now we're going through a budget process. That budget process is really only talking about projects that need money in next year's budget and or future money. If the project is fully funded, you won't see it on this project list. Okay. But you want to know if there's a project out there that you know it's happening and you don't see in there, that means it's fully funded. Then we have this document called a quarterly monitoring book that we update every quarter that kind of shows the, the project description and the life to date uh, cost, the budget, where we're in a status update. It's, there's a page for every single project. Um, and there's a lot of projects out there. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing I would like the, the the average citizen to know. Another thing I would like them to know is that for future projects, the projects we're going through a process now through the, through a budget process, I would like to highlight some things that they might find um, knowledgeable. They would like to know. So this is yeah. projects that would be started in fiscal year 24. What's coming up in July? Or projects that's already started but just hasn't gotten money gotcha. to, okay. to, to continue the project. Uh, one of them, I'm going to go back to the schools, yeah. is there's a elementary school, a new elementary school that is starting to be, uh, be constructed through construction funds. I know uh, the school system or is actual the project manager on that, and they're working towards uh, I think they just awarded a construction contract for this elementary school. They call right now, they're calling it elementary school number 23. Uh, at some point, it'll, it'll become it'll a, name. a name. But and right then it's got to get a mascot. That's the most important part, right? Exactly. We got to have a name and then we got to figure out who the mascot yeah, and is. And that's all the song <laughs> that the school system all uh, determines. It doesn't, it's not, there's no really much Charles County government uh, feedback on that. Because we're just the money. We're just, we're just money. helping to manage the funding. Correct. Okay. Uh, also, in our five year plan, is we have funding set aside for a potential new middle school. Uh, we also have replacement schools. So, for example, T.C. Martin right now is mm -hmm. a replacement school. And we also have a project set aside to uh, to make improvements to La Plata High School. Great. Uh, we have full-day kindergarten edition projects. I could go on. There are a lot of board of education projects. But one thing that I find really cool that we're actually – that we were able to find funding for in this year's budget is the first – school-based health center in Charles County. Uh, this is a project that uh, the school system championed. They asked us to put it in the budget. We were able to find money for it. And this would be the, sc the first school-based health center in Charles County at any head elementary school. They, the school system has, has gotten grants to pay for the actual operating part. They just needed the capital part to pay for it. And that's where our play, that's where we came in to do that. So we were able to secure money in, for this year's budget, assuming the commissioners approve the budget. We have that in there. So it's pretty exciting for to have that ability for our residents in Charles County. Yeah. And I'll make sure that in the show notes, we put the link to where that presentation was, because yeah. I think it's, it is a really interesting idea of how we all work together, that if we need, we know the west side of the county might not have access to as many resources, right. so the schools need this, but the county needs this, and if we can all work together, we've got this great partnership. Correct. Awesome. Uh, other projects that we have in uh, concerning parks, uh, we are trying to put a new park in Waldorf, and as well as we have starting to put money aside for a new recreation center. Uh, it's not just started yet, but in our when we do our model, it's always a five-year plan. So we try to say, well, we're going to spend our monies in the next five years. So we now have more monies in the CIP to start getting a recreation center, hopefully built in Charles County. Not sure where it's going to be or what the makeup is. That's something that would all be determined at a later point in time. But we're starting to put money aside to potentially have a recreation center. And in that Charles makes County. so much sense to me because like when you used the model 
the example of if you had the HVAC unit in your house that you know need to be replaced. I don't need to know that I'm going to buy a certain type. I just know that five years from now, I'm probably going to need to replace it. Let me start putting the money away now yes. so that when my air conditioning does go, then I can figure out what brand I'm going to get and how big. But I know it's going to break at some point. I'll start saving. Right. So okay. our project managers do have a, a, a they do have a timeline where they know like for, that. Oh, this roof is a 15 year roof. So 15 years from now, we got to ask for that. So that's when they start putting the monies right. of requesting in into the model. Unfortunately, we always have more requests than what we can afford, uh, but we always try to fit in based on priorities. Uh, the biggest priorities is always easily the school system because they have the most the need for, because it's, you know, it's for our children. Right. Uh, but we also have other, like when we look at the, on the, County, the ones that are managed by county government, a lot of it is looking at what is needs to replace is an HVAC or a roof and so forth. And then what's more of a public safety component? We mm -hmm. want to make sure, you know, that there's anything that's could improve the public safety of our citizens, which that's a, an important thing to put in right. and, and so forth. So you must get a little bit overwhelmed, I would assume, by all yeah. of the people saying, Jake, yes. I need this, Jake, yeah. I need this, Jake, I need this. Correct. Yes. But yeah. it's a long process. You know, we start the process in September. So you think the budget gets approved in May and you're done? No, you're just literally just setting, a, taking a, a few days off and the next, you know, you're starting on the next year's budget. It starts all over. It starts all over. We start yeah. the process in September. We work through the project managers. We have meetings with different departments as well as the county minister's office. And then eventually it turns into a proposed budget in front of the commissioners. Perfect. So yeah. if people want to find out more, they can go online. Yes. Um, I'll make sure they can see that, that health center presentation which yeah. is so great. Any other big projects you want people to know about? Gosh, I could probably talk a lot. <laughs> That's okay. So, but I, I would go I, online. I would recommend they just go online Good. because just because of what I think is a, a important project it's cool in Charles County. There might be a lot of other cool things out there that someone else might find. No problem. Find we'll great. direct people yeah. to the website. They yeah. can find more. Yes. Okay. General fund. Yes. So we've talked about enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the capital improvement program. Yeah. General fund is everything else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. So tell me what that means. I mean, that's my way of kind of understanding that, like, we have a budget and it's got to this and it's got to this, but it's got to that also. What's the that? What's so, the general fund? So the general fund is, is our largest fund. Uh, most of that fund is generated by taxes that the, comes to the county. I know I kind of touched base at a previous episode about the property taxes mm -hmm. that kind of showed how the process on how we determine that revenue, but that's really only about 50% of our revenues. Uh, we have uh, the other remaining 50% is includes income taxes, uh, some uh, real estate taxes, which is transfer and uh, recordation taxes. And then we have all their fees to help pay for certain programs. It's kind of like an enterprise fund, but they're in the general fund. So those fees pay for that service. It's just part of the general fund. Um, so we have that revenue structure. I do want to, if I, if I could say, I do want to kind of mention the income tax component, because that's really the the most hardest one for us to nail down mm -hmm. each year because the way the process, the way the income taxes work. So it's, let's just, you, 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 you get a paycheck mm -hmm. out of your paycheck, you get paid something and then you see taxes tanking out. Well, one of those taxes coming out is, it's, it, is income taxes. That income tax is ultimately collected by the state comptroller's office. State Comptroller's Office is collecting every single uh, paycheck from taxes from every single employer in the state of Maryland. It all goes in one big pot. Mm -hmm. And then the, I don't envy them. The Comptroller's Office has to go through and determine how much goes to Charles County, how much goes to Prince George's County, how much goes to Garrett County, and so forth. And they do that on a monthly basis sometimes, and sometimes it's a quarterly basis. But they have to look at the process and then say, this is how much goes there. And a lot of times when that money comes through, it's based on estimates. There's a lot of estimates because they won't actually know what the income taxes is for one year until after all the filing. Right. So they're giving us a lot of money based on estimates, but during, but they're also, and then they true it up later. So sometimes we think we know what our, what our revenue stream is and we do our best, but, but it, we don't really know what it is until after the budget gets adopted. So I'm going to I'm going to rephrase. Tell me yeah. if I'm saying this correctly. Okay, so I Doria Fleischer yeah. work and live in Charles County. I get my paycheck and that money gets taken out and it hurts so badly and it goes to the Comptroller of Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Comptroller of Maryland does some kind of a magic formula where they say because I am Charles County, my income tax should come here. Yeah. 
but they can't determine whether I'm going to work the full year. <laughs> they can't determine if I'm going to get a raise. They can't right. determine all of those things. So they're kind of guesstimating how much of my income tax should come. Yes. And you guys are then kind of sitting there saying, well, we hope we get that money. <laughs> yes. Is that an accurate way to say it? Yeah. And, okay. the, and the way it, the, the distribution works, when we do the budget for the upcoming year, in that fiscal year where we're using the revenues, we only have 50% of our revenue stream in this fiscal year mm. to really drive off our estimates for next year. So that's, the, I just want to point out to this, to, to the it's citizen. It's a whole other level of confusion. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And, or I shouldn't say confusion, maybe complication of one more Correct. way where it's like, we don't really know what we'll have. Yeah. Well, like okay. for assessments, we know what the, what the house is assessed at. Mm -hmm. We know the tax rate and we know that revenue. But when it comes to income taxes, we don't know, again, what, where you're, any salary increases people are going to receiving and just really the complexity of, of that income tax distribution that ultimately comes from the state. And the reason that you touched on all of this is, that then when you look at our revenue, mm -hmm. so you know what we can spend, right. you don't actually know what our revenue is going to be. We, we do, we're we trying our best, and it's based on historical distribution. So we're, we're actually pretty darn close to what we receive. It's mm -hmm. just it's not a uh, – it's never 100% accurate. Gotcha. But, okay. So, so that's how the money comes in. That's the revenue. We yes. get it from the income tax, the property tax, and um, the, the funds that aren't quite enterprise fund, but yeah. fee-for-service, like going to a rec program. Am I saying that correctly? Um, so we'll, I'll touch base on one of uh, the golf course. Okay. So if you're, if you're golfing at the golf course, that's including the general fund. So if you're paying to uh, your green fees or your golf cart, that's just going to the general fund. Uh, we also have other type of fee-for-services, like, for example, uh, we have fines. So if you ha there's a red light camera program, mm -hmm. those revenues that if you get a fine, go into the general fund. So some fee for service, but different from the enterprise. Yes. Okay. That's how the money comes in. Yeah. How does the money go out? How, how do you yeah. determine how to spend right. what's in the general fund? So it's, it's a process. Yeah. Like I kind of explained with the CIP, uh, we start the process in uh, September, October, where we start getting our numbers down for revenues. And then we start sending requests to all the, our departments and, and uh, partner agencies to say, what do you need? To, what, what, what are your needs for next year? So they, we work with them. We start in October with what we think the budget should look like. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then November, December time period was when they're kind of um, submitting their requests. Uh, once we get past the Christmas and New Year's holidays uh, in January, we start uh, my office, the budget division, meets with the individual county government departments and some of our smaller agencies to figure to make sure we have their requests correctly. Mm -hmm. And once we know what their requests are, then we transition to another group se series of meetings, and that's with the county administrator's office, where the departments or agencies kind of present their budget to that office and then, from, and then state their case, like why I need this request mm -hmm. and so forth. And then once we hear everything, then we start, we re, we really fine tune our revenue estimate. And then we look at it and say, well, what can we, what can we put in? Uh, one thing that's interesting under this year's budget process is the first time we've ever done it is we embedded equity into our budget discussions. Okay. So we had the uh, departments fill out a, uh, some questions about equity. We worked with our chief equity officer on those questions and she assisted with us at the end of the budget process uh, on what we should fit into the budget for next year. And I know the word equity is getting thrown around so much right, right now. Spend just a minute talking about how equity and budgeting go hand in hand. And, and yeah. you don't have to do a deep dive. That might be another conversation. Yeah. But give kind of the overview to our to our residents that are like, how does equity have to do with what you're spending? <laughs> so, well, one, you want to make sure you don't, uh, by do, giving, you're not creating any unfair uh, unfairness to someone else. If you're if you're providing funding to one department, does it create a disadvantage somewhere else? So that's the one piece you want to look at. And you also want to look at the county as a whole to make sure you're looking at the whole entire county. So if you're so it's more fair because you don't want any unintended consequences by doing uh, by providing funding from one area, not the other. So it's kind of that overall view to make sure that everybody in Charles County gets the same equitable, right. you're not supposed to use the word in the definition, yeah. but the same equitable access to the resources that are getting funded. Yes. Is that accurate? Yeah. So like okay. that school-based health center, yeah. that's a great example of how we embedded equity because we knew that was an area that was, uh, that needed, for, that needed that type of school-based system. So that was a great 
it was really easy for us once we knew that the grant funds had been securely operated. It was a really easy decision that to put makes that sense, into the budget because we knew that area of the county yeah. needed that kind of boost up to yes. have access to those resources. Correct. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. So right now we're yeah. waiting for the budget to right. do what we've we've gotten. We, yeah. Departments have said this is what we want. The yes. county administrator has said yeah. this is looking okay to me. Yeah. So our proposed budget's out on the website. Uh, we do have, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't fit in all the requests. There's always, uh, every year I've been doing this for 20 years, there's always more requests than what, what, right. what we can afford. Uh, we do put out those requests to show the citizens this was requested not not in the proposed budget. Okay. Uh, some, But we did, I feel as though we fit, um, fit in some some good needs into the, the budget. Uh, one of them is we, uh, we really concentrated on emergency services this mm. year. Uh, we, uh, we put in more positions to ensure the, when the phone, when the 911 call comes in that the ambulance can get to you in, a, in, a, in an appropriate time. Right. And there's enough staff available to assist not only you, but also for that when that next call comes in. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're waiting for what now? What what happens next? So, right. So the budget was uh, submitted to the county commissioners. They're, we're reviewing it with them right now. And then the next process is they have the ability to make additions or deletions okay. to the budget. It's a process. It's a form that they fill out and then they submit it and they discuss it amongst themselves and they make changes to the budget. Eventually the budget will get adopted by May 16th. The budget actually has to be adopted per county code, per state code by the June 30th. Okay. And it has to be balanced. We can't just... Nah, we'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out as we yeah. go. Yeah, we're not, <laughs> none we're, of that. Uh, none of that. We have to balance a budget. It has to be a balanced budget. Okay. It has to go through a process. Every uh, We typically try to do it in the middle of May. Every year, the last few years, when we said we're going to do it on this day, it's happened. Okay. Uh, the commissioners have been very kind and, and stuck to that schedule. Uh, so that's the process. We're, we're Right now, is it with the commissioners to make any changes to it? Um, they, every year, there is changes. We're because we want to, that, that's their ability. Right. And then we make the changes they need. And then eventually uh, in the middle of May, we'll go in front of the commissioners and have them formally adopt the budget. Beautiful. All right. So when we sit down next time, Jake, we're going to talk about what gets adopted, how yes. it looks, how we're going to start spending that money. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll touch, and I'll try and touch base on not only just on the, I know we talked about the general fund and the CIP, but I can also circle it back to that enterprise fund um, discussion Perfect. that we had. Thank you so much for being here, Jake Dyer, our Chief of Budget. We appreciate you coming in to explain everything about our budget process and beyond for Let's Get Fiscal. It's more than just numbers. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. For more information on Charles County government, visit our website, www.charlescountymd.gov. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the county's e-news. Also, don't forget to sign up for our text and email alerts through the Citizen Notification System. You can watch CCG TV on Comcast Channel 95 or Verizon Fios 10, and we're streaming on Apple TV and Roku devices. Just search Charles County Government. You can also subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts by searching Charles County Government. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care, stay safe, and stay engaged.